power grid stabilized. Life support systems optimal. Well done, Jack. We're getting full power here. How is progress on your end? Dr. Harlan's still running Sims, but I think we at least have a working theory. All the models we've run so far appear to confirm. Biomass interaction with an active FTL triggers an abnormal buildup of energy within the drive, resulting in the formation of a temporal anomaly. For reasons we still don't fully understand. It is also unclear why the accident only caused the Android software to travel through time, as opposed to the more physical time jumps we've observed with the Astrea. But at this point, I'm willing to accept these ambiguities and proceed. Wait, what exactly are you saying? We must try it again. What, send Jack back in time again? You've got to be kidding me. It's the only way. Any chance we have of eliminating the biomass lies with finding an undetonated torpedo. We must send the android back. You talk like he's expendable. Well, of course he is. All of us are. Hey. You've seen how it spreads. Eradicating the biomass is going to take everything we have, and then some. Yeah, well, it's not just up to you, is it? Jack, what do you think? Hell yeah, we're going back in time. Dangerous or not, the potential lives saved makes it worth trying. That's an awfully big risk. You would do the same were the roles reversed. And you would probably try to talk me out of it too. <laughs> would I succeed? No. All right. Fine. I'm in. What do we need to do next? We're going to have to recreate the circumstances of the time travel accident. Oh, don't. Oh, no. We're going to need biomass. Contained biomass samples specifically. The research facility should serve our purposes nicely. There is one other problem. The FTL accident depleted the drive's fuel cells, and we don't have the supplies to refill them. Then... Our best bet for a few cell will be the remnants of the Astrea. However, exploring that area may be difficult. Pesky shipboard defense protocols somehow remain active. Something off with the AI, Juno says. Hmm, could be just as dangerous as dealing with the biomass, really. Well, Jack, what's up first? Grab some creepy crawlies from the research facility? Or dig up a fuel cell for the FTL drive. <laughs> fuel. The FTL fuel cell sounds like a priority. Feeling a bit nostalgic for the old Astrea, are we? Following the yellow conduits will lead you directly to the salvage site. Thank you, Juno. So when Jack eventually returns with these volatile materials, where exactly do we plan to store them? I believe I can convert elements of the refueling depot to suit our needs. Need a hand? Why, yes, Captain. Your assistance would be most appreciated. Anything's better than just sitting here. Come on, Popcorn. Let's get ready to head out. Good luck out there. Thank you. See you soon. It is actually so fun that we can actually just fly around. It doesn't look like a big deal, but it is. Like Approaching the Australia now. Finally. If any fuel cells are still intact, they'd probably be deeper within the wreckage. Unfortunately, everything beyond the bridge is steeped in radiation and the ship's AI is just making matters worse. The ship's AI? Do you mean Apollo? Are oh, you familiar? Apollo was the ship's tactical AI. He was instrumental in helping us survive our first encounter with the biomass. I just hope he's still online. Considering my difficulties exploring here, he must be. Then if we can make contact with Apollo, he can probably help us find the fuel cell we need. Guess it's time to say hello to our old friend. Roger that. Heading to the bridge. A bypass for the door controls, locked behind a keypad. It was the only way I could gain access. The code is 2126. <laughs> I've gained access to the bridge. I assume you have some type of plan. Apollo's AI core would be an appropriate place to start. 
It was vital to his operation here. Good point, Jack. If it's still intact, could be all we need to strike up a conversation. You two are rather confident. Apollo commissioned us as official crew members last time we met. And we did part on good terms. I'm sure he'll do what he can to help. Yeah, it'll be fine. A casualty from Dr. Harlan's previous investigation. It was just another shell lying around the station. We were trying to put it to good use. I thought I could pilot it well enough, but apparently limb control is not my forte. I'm expecting you'll fare better, Echo One. If this Apollo is indeed the ally you say he is. That's gonna be a fun reunion. Disable the alarms. Now. Invalid command. The only crew members authorized with bridge access are Captain Olivia Rhodes and the Echo Unit designation. Jack. Welcome back to the Astrea. Hey. It is good to see you. Thank you, Apollo. It is good to see you as well. Is Captain Rhodes with you? And well, I hope. Cheers, Apollo. We missed you. Likewise, Captain. Jack, your appearance is altered. I almost did not recognize you. I must apologize for the alarms. Your reasoning was sound. What brings you back to the Astrea? We need an FTL fuel cell, Apollo. But we believe you've been disabling Dr. Harlan's salvaging equipment. We'll need it back online to deal with the radiation here. Preserving this vessel is my primary directive. The last time jump virtually destroyed it. No further attempts to remove or misuse equipment can be permitted. Lives depend on it, Apollo. I understand, Captain. But I cannot allow any further material from this vessel to be compromised. Apollo, Liv is infected with the biomass. And your directive is protecting this ship's crew and its critical assets. Forgive me, Jack. I failed to follow your reasoning. You yourself commissioned Liv, a fellow Atlas employee, as acting captain after the deaths of your original crew. You must remember. Confirmed. <laughs> Though I had not considered her status in such terms. Captain Rhodes is... truly infected. She needs your help. Very well. As the Astraea's tactical adjunct, my primary directive is to protect its crew. So you will help them? Affirmative. I am hereby available to assist you in obtaining a fuel cell. Lovely. That's settled. Apollo, are you able to detect any fuel cells that are still operational? My sensor network has been severely damaged. However, any functional fuel cells on the Astraea would be in the auxiliary drive bay. It can be seen through the window far ahead of the bridge. Okay, I see. Do you remember it? The defibrillation unit. It is approximately 400 meters from here. Seems easy enough to reach. And it would be if this AI hadn't disabled the equipment I set up to counter the radiation. A temporary security measure. Your equipment is now re-enabled. You better not have damaged any of it. Normal operations should resume now. Jack can verify this. Oh dear. Incoming. Hey! <laughs> what the hell is that? A cargo drone. Apparently no longer capable of flight. Apologies. My anti-theft protocols are quite aggressive. <gasps> Fortunately, our salvaging equipment appears to still have working radiation dampeners, meaning Jack should now have a safe route to the drive bay. That's some good news. A number of problems remain. Accessing the fuel cells, for one. Doing so will require that I have direct control of the systems within the drive bay. You must bring me along with you. Are you seriously going to integrate with this rogue AI? Without Apollo, we wouldn't have lasted this long. Hmm. We can trust him. Jack, I'll walk you through the process of downloading my imprint to your cortex. I'm ready, Apollo. Simply insert my AI core into the lower receptacle. Then use your data link on the override slot. I will do the rest. 
Disconnecting from mainframe now. Download complete. Only one final issue remains, Jack. Your arms are too short. Not too short. The FTL technology is highly sensitive. Accessing the drive bay and the fuel cells within will require multiple operators. Good thing there's two of us, then. Unfortunately, the debris field is far too irradiated to accommodate Captain Rhodes. You're saying Jack's the best chance we've got, but even he won't be enough. I might be able to help, actually. The cargo drones employ stasis technology, which enables them to manipulate objects at a distance. Like the stasis projectors we used to levitate the tram back in the hab. Exactly. I believe I can incorporate the drone stasis deck into your shell, Jack. I'll just need more data from them to be sure. The drone that just hit the bridge is unlikely to put up much resistance. I'll start there. Whenever you're ready, Jack. I'm heading out. Oh, I can't interact with it anymore? Damn it. <laughs> I wanted to... Bring her a traumatic experience back. Do we actually have to carry it? No. Jack, to stay protected from radiation out there, you'll need to activate radiation dampeners with your data link. They can be found on both charging docks and cargo drones. Shields at 95%. Let me do it fastly then. Radiation dampener activated. Hypothesis confirmed. With sufficient data, I'll be able to construct a tool for extending your reach, Jack. Does this tool have a name, Juno? Well, it will essentially project your grip across space, so I suppose... It's a grip projector. Let's move on. More data will be needed. There will be plenty on the way to the drive bay. You know what to look for. Affirmative. Inoperable cargo drones, but with functioning data ports, heading to the drive bay. Please remember the charging docks have radiation dampeners as well, Jack. They'll help keep you safe out there. Thank you, Juno. Hmm. At least a small amount of that data is relevant to the biomass. We can use it in our development of a cure. What's this? This equipment is some form of dock or buoy. Affirmative. It's one of the station's charging docks. They're set up to facilitate recharging and navigation for the various drones deployed here. Though, it is worth noting that the Doctor and I have redeployed several pieces of equipment as well. Fortunately, with the generator repaired, we should be able to restore most of the equipment throughout the station by scanning their data ports. Echo One, those charging docks won't have the data Juno needs to design your new tool, but they will restore your power. Hold your hands near the induction panel, and it will recharge your shielding. Fun! What now? Shields at 95%. Charging dock restored to operational status. You may recharge your shield as needed. Though, interesting. I believe I may have found a secondary use for restoring these docks, recovering their local data, specifically because the docks normally maintain a coordination and optimization network. They contain shared data from across the station. Prior to the generator going offline, the units in irradiated areas were sharing optimizations that I believe could still be used to improve your multispectral shielding, Jack. Scanning further docks should provide the necessary data? Yes, I believe so. I've added a tracker to your data tab. Apollo, uh, I wanted to ask. Yes, Captain. I... well, you probably figured this out already, but... You know this isn't your time, right? This isn't the future you came from. Affirmative. 
When we first arrived, I was able to accurately calculate the astronomical year. However, I lacked sufficient data to determine that the course of history had been altered. I apologize for having misinformed you. The fact that half of the Estrella was left in your time and led to system-wide decimation of the human race is clear evidence of a tactical oversight on my part. What's this? Like a bomb? Shields at 95%. Thank God for the boosters. Jack, I'm detecting extreme radiation nearby. If you can pinpoint the source, I advise staying clear. Yeah. Hell of a lot of radiation out there. This is coming from the Astraea. Correct. The Astraea's last time jump ruptured a generator, diffusing radiation throughout the region. Thus, the radiation dampness. Hazard identified. An active warhead from the Astraea. Once your grip projector is installed, removal of dangerous objects like this will be possible. Until then, maintaining a prudent distance is advisable. Do we still go to the... Not Earth. <laughs> Shields at ninety five per cent. Nothing to the biomass. attempting to salvage the Astraea. The odds of my ship's components being compatible with yours seems unlikely. It wasn't the hardware I was after. Your ship was the original source of the infestation. I'd hoped to find an undetonated biomass torpedo amongst the wreckage. Use it to develop a cure for all this. I understand, Doctor. Considering my current directives, I will provide any useful data that may help in your research. Better late than never, I suppose. Installation successful. Jack, your multispectral shielding should now be more resistant to radiation. Please note, however, that contact with biomass will still drain it just as rapidly as before. Understood. Thank you, Juno. Of course. I love that the dialogue does not interrupt while doing multiple actions. Shields at 95%. Approaching the drive bay. I'm detecting some intense radiation there, Jack. Warheads, I believe. I advise removing them from the immediate area before proceeding. Sounds like the perfect job for that new tool you're working on. Correct. It will allow him to manipulate distant objects, including these warheads. Good luck collecting that data, Jack. Copy that, Liv. I'll continue searching for cargo drones to scan. <laughs> 